What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's video I'm going to be talking about louver signs in Revit. So I'm sure you have seen this either on cafes or on some uh, big uh, buildings. Uh, there's a, either a logo or a text and it's either made out of louvers or it's like a void within louvers. I'm going to put some pictures over here. So uh, it's something that they find really fascinating and I really like it. So I, I wanted to see how something like that is possible in Revit and I actually found like a, a YouTube tutorial that shows like uh, the approach but it doesn't have like a explanation of each step so I thought why not create a tutorial where I explore that in depth and show everything step by step so anybody can create something like that for their own project. Uh, now before I get started I would just like to ask you to like this video it helps me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm helps promote the video to other people that might want to see it. Uh, and also make sure to subscribe. I make useful Revit tutorials each week. I make multiple tutorials and you don't want to miss any of those. Uh, and finally, make sure to check out my website, balkanarctic.com. That's going to be the first link just below the video in the description. There, I take the extra time to go step-by-step -step and slowly explain all of Revit's beginner, intermediate, as well as advanced level topics. I explore both the tools and features as well as the workflows. So if you're serious, about learning Revit, please check it out. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get straight into Revit. Oh, did I say Revit? I meant to say AutoCAD. <laughs> well, actually for this tutorial, we have to start in AutoCAD. Uh, the only reason is, uh, is because while well, AutoCAD has a tool or a feature that's available uh, that's going to help us out that Revit simply doesn't have, so we have to start off here. Uh, so uh, to get started, let's just go here and start a new drawing and then uh, I'm just going to come in here, uh, go straight to the text tool. Now you want to open up the drop menu and make sure you're using the single line text. So let's choose that. You click once and then you have to set up the height. So here this is 39. Let's see, can we go up? Uh, let's go with, I don't know, like 50 and then you have to specify the rotation. So I'm just going to go with zero. So just hit enter and there we go. Now I'm going to type in BA for Balkan Architect. And once I'm happy with that, just click out of there. And there we go. Hit the escape key a couple of times. And now we have text that says BA or Balkan Architect. Uh, now this text is all nice and well, but we actually have to turn this text into line work uh, so we can use the, those lines to, or so we can pick those lines in order to complete uh, in order to complete our louver uh, text. Uh, so that's why we're using AutoCAD. We want to convert text into lines. So you can do that simply in AutoCAD by using a tool that's called Text Explode. So you just go to text x So T E X E X P. So text explode. This is the tool here. See, uh, and then you select that. You select the text like so. You hit enter, and there we go. It has exploded that text. Uh, now it is going to give you a couple of issues like these lines here, but don't worry. You can get rid of them really easily simply by typing in T R for trim. You hit enter once, and then you can simply go and trim everything that you would like. So let's trim this, this as well, and then this too. Okay, so now we have text that says BA. Uh, now you can notice that this has now been kind of uh, separated into numerous polylines. Uh, uh, now you want to bring that together. So PE uh, is the edit, which allows you to edit polylines. So I can just go and join all of these, or I can just go like this. There we go, join all of them together, hit enter, hit the escape key a couple of times. So it did join the outer one, but not the inner ones. So let's try BE here, again join, select both of these, hit enter. There we go, so this is now a complete one. Let's try and do the same thing for this one. Okay, this one is done. And then we have to do the same thing for the A. So again, you select one, B, E, join. You join them up like so, hit enter. Perfect. And then finally, let's go with this one, join and join them together, hit enter. 
And as you can see now, all of these are polylines. Now, hopefully they will stick as these uh, once we transfer them into Revit. Uh, if they don't, you'll see what I mean because they can give you trouble sometime. Uh, now, one thing before we save this file is uh, I wanna go here to the measure tool and let's just measure the height here. So it's 58 uh, in, in Revit, it's going to be 58 centimeters. So let's just increase this slightly. So I'm going to select both of these letters here, go into scale. And then let's scale them like this. So hmm, we can go like this. So we have large letters. If I now go to measure this, this is 230, so almost two meters high. That's perfectly fine. And once we're happy with this, let's save this text. So you want to go here and let's save. I'm going to save it on my desktop. Let's call it the, I don't know, 2D text. Save, there we go. Now let's transfer into Revit. So while we're in Revit here, let's go straight into new for a new project. Uh, for the template file, I'm going to choose my personal Balkan Arctic uh, design template. Now, if you want to check out my templates, you can find both of them on my website, balkanarctic.com. That's going to be the third link in the description. So check it out if you're interested. Click OK. Uh, and the reason why I want to use my personal template is not because we have this really nice starting view, <laughs> not because of that, but uh, because I already have an assembled louver wall here. So if I go to the wall command, you can see that we have this curtain wall called a louver system. And if I just take that one and create a line like so, you will see that, well, it actually creates a louver. So if I go to the 3D view, this is what that looks like. Uh, now, if you want to learn how to build this family, I do uh, explain this in my, uh, I think it's like wooden louver facade video. I'm going to link it up either in the cards or in the description or something like that. So uh, be sure to check that tutorial out if you don't know how to build this or if you don't have my template. Uh, but anyways, here we have this louver. Uh, now I want to make the distance between these elements a little smaller. So what I'm going to do is just select the louver then go into edit type and then here for the spacing let's go with something really small like six centimeters hit apply okay and now it's going to have a bunch of these next to each other that's perfect next you want to go down into level one or actually you want to go to south elevation to be exact and once we're here in the south elevation let's bring in that to the text from CAD so you just go here to insert you go to uh, import CAD click there. Uh, let's find the 2D text. Uh, for the import units, make sure to set that to centimeters. Usually it's going to be at auto detect. You don't want that. You want centimeters. Uh, we can preserve the colors and everything else seems fine. So let's just hit open. And here is our text. Now it's going to be a little tricky to select it. So let's get there we go. We can select it like that. You can unpin that and then you can use the move tool in order to place it exactly where you want to have that. Okay, let's say that we're happy with this text being here. And now I can just, perhaps I can pin that in place or whatever you wanna do. Now the next step is how do we actually convert this or show this on our wall? Well, the reason why we've created this text in CAD uh, and have these outlines is because now we can select the uh, louver system wall, go into edit type, or sorry, edit profile. And then I can simply use pick lines to pick out this text. Now I can, let me just delete this one, go with pick lines and let's try again. I'm just going to use the tab key. So as you can see, it's going to select a larger segment. Now the downside of this is even though we have completely kind of joined this up uh, in AutoCAD, it's still kept it divided for some reason. Perhaps we try, yeah, that's not going to work. So it's just going to, have it kind of divided into these small segments, which is kind of annoying because you have already joined that up, but now you have to go and kind of manually select these smaller lines that aren't going to be selected by using the pick lines and the tab key. So see how when I'm using the tab key, oh, it recognized the segment, but here we seem to have an overlap. So make sure to delete that. There we go. So you can just try like that using the tab key, make, try to, have a larger selection or a chain, but for some reason here, it doesn't let me select any more of this, which I really don't like, but that's what we have. 
let's join this up here okay and then again just pick lines and go all the way through uh, now obviously this is going to be much easier for the a so any letter that has these curves it's going to be annoying especially something like o b b and so on but for a as you can see it's going to be really straightforward so you just click you just use the tab key once you click and there we go so for a it's perfectly simple and then for this b letter it's a little bit annoying because it doesn't want to recognize that chain of lines so as you can see it's go it goes up to here but then we have to do it manually so anyways i'm just going to skip <laughs> just selecting all of these and then obviously here wherever you have these gaps you want to fill that out with lines like so but anyways in the end you should have everything completed so i'm just going to skip the step of just manually selecting all of these and here we go you can see that we have uh, kind of completed this whole line and now i'm just going to hit finish wait for a few seconds for revit to calculate everything uh, and this is what we get now this uh, obviously has some uh, minor issues so uh, mainly uh, the problem is these lines here so what Revit will do uh, is it will add these kind of edge conditions or edge mullions to some uh, sides of these letters. Now obviously we don't want this because it doesn't look good. So what I'm going to do is select that uh, louver uh, or uh, curtain system, uh, go into edit type, and then here for the uh, horizontal grid, uh, you can see that we don't really have any mullions. But for the vertical grid, you want to get rid of the border types, for both one and two. So you just want to set both to none. Click apply. That's going to say, well, some mullions will be deleted. That's OK. Click OK again. And that should, let's see, OK, didn't get rid of them. Yeah, I guess Revit wanted to keep those, which is kind of annoying. Let's see. So we can just go because it kind of disassociated them. So we should be able to get rid of those. Or I think if we just make a selection like this, because those are not pinned in place, if I hit delete, it should just delete them. Yeah, there we go. That's good. Same thing goes with this one and again here. So you just make a cross selection and because uh, the, the ones that we want to keep are pinned and these are not, when I hit delete, it will only delete the ones that are not pinned. And this is what we get in the end. I think it looks really nice. So uh, obviously you can add a, a wall behind that. Uh, also, it makes sense to select that out to get text, unpin that and hit delete. And this is what we get. It looks really, really good, uh, especially on a facade of a building. Uh, if this were made out of wood or something like that, I think it would uh, look really, really good. So there we go. That's the approach to creating something like this. It does have a few extra steps, but I think it's worth it in the end because it does look really, really good. There we go. I hope you have enjoyed this. Uh, tell me in the comment section below if you did. Uh, if you have any perhaps different solutions, better solutions, I would like to hear that as well. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you for watching. Make sure to check out my website, BalkanArctic.com, the first link in the description. If you want the courses, uh, the second link takes you to my Patreon page. There you can find all of my project files. And finally, the third link takes you to my uh, website again, but for templates, if that's what you're interested in. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, make sure to subscribe, like and share this video, and I'll be back with another tutorial in a couple of days. Have a nice day.